We are going to be recording this training. So first we'll go over some virtual housekeeping. Um, it looks like everybody's name is in the their Zoom, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, make sure that if your microphone is muted, but if you do have a question, feel free to pop on in and unmute it. You can also write in the chat. If I don't answer right away, because I probably won't see it, we have our program specialists in, on the line today too, so they'll be able to answer some questions if you want to wait till the end. That is perfectly acceptable as well. And if you have anyone else with you, you can also add their name to your Zoom link or your Zoom name. So we'll get started. Um, so school lunch professional standards regulation. So again, just emphasizing that this is for school lunch. Um, we are going to be talking about the regulations and how it sets the minimum standard for the hiring of school food service directors and sets minimum requirements for annual training for all school nutrition staff. We'll talk later more about like the specific requirements for hiring food service directors and the training requirements for all kitchen staff. So the purpose of professional standard requirements is to ensure that the school nutrition personnel involved in the national school lunch and school breakfast programs have the knowledge and skills to manage and operate the programs correctly and successfully. So as you know, it takes more than great cooking skills to run a school nutrition program. And that's why we have those professional standard requirements. So we're gonna go ahead and take our first poll. It should show up on your screen and I'll just read it out. The professional standards regulations apply to all staff working in the kitchen in one way or another. So, so far, we have 100% on every answer, I mean, everyone who answered. Yes, that is true. So in one way or another, the professional standard regulations apply to all staff working in the kitchen. So now we will discuss the hiring standards, which are required for all school nutrition directors. So new directors hired on or after July 1st, 2015 must meet the hiring requirements. Directors in their position prior to that date are grandfathered in. However, if a food service director quits at one school and is hired at another school, they must meet the hiring requirements at that time. Hiring requirements are broken down based on student enrollment, which we'll cover these requirements more in depth in some upcoming slides. So for more information on hiring requirements, of course, there is a memo that can be found. Um, this training will be posted, but if you need the link to this immediately, we can also help you with that as well. So for districts with enrollments over 10,000 students, the hiring requirements for new school nutrition directors requires the applicant to possess a bachelor's degree or equivalent education experience with academic major in specific areas. So those specific areas are going to include food and nutrition, food service management, dietetics, family and consumer sciences, nutrition education, uh, culinary arts, business, or a related field. Or the school nutrition director is required to possess a bachelor's degree in any academic major and state recognized certificate. Or um, a bachelor's degree in any academic major and at least five years experience in management of school nutrition programs. So again, this is for a food service director with an enrollment of over 10,000 students. So we'll go down a little bit. So for districts with enrollments between 2,500 to 9,999 students, 
the new school nutrition director would need to possess a bachelor's degree or equivalent education experience with the academic major in specific areas, which would include the same areas mentioned in the previous slide, which are also at the bottom of this one, um, or they possess a bachelor's degree in any academic major and state recognized certificate for school nutrition directors or an associate's degree or equivalent at ed um, educational experiences with academic majors in specific areas and at least two years of re relevant school nutrition program experience. So a little bit less than the over the 10,000 students. Now for districts with a student enrollment of 2,499 or less, the school nutrition director must have a bachelor's degree or equivalent education experience with the academic major in specific areas. The same areas as mentioned previously. Or they should have a bachelor's degree in any academic major and state recognized certificate for school nutrition directors or at least one year experience of relevant food service experience. They can also have an associate's degree or equivalent education experience with an academic major in specific areas and at least one year of relevant food service experience. Or they can have a high school diploma or GED and at least three years relevant experience in food service. So new food service directors or school nutrition program directors at schools with 2,499 or fewer students are also required to have relevant food service experience rather than school nutrition specific program experience. So state agencies like us may consider documented volunteer or unpaid work as relevant experience for new school nutrition program directors in districts with 2,499 or fewer students. So state agencies are also allowed the discretion to accept less than the required years of food service experience when an applicant for a new director position in the district with fewer than 500 students. Um, and if it meets that minimum required education. So we'll look a little bit more at some smaller districts with fewer than 500 students. The CANS office does have the discretion to approve the hiring of a director that has a high school diploma, but less than three years of experience. So districts must contact the state agency as soon as possible if this situation occurs. You'll be asked for the following information, um, the name of the applicant, applicant's education level, relevant school nutrition program experience or food service experience, date of food safety training, which must be a minimum of eight hours or date of planned food safety training within 30 days of hire. So a description of hiring process or how you announce and advertise the position, a description of why this applicant was the best choice out of the other applicants. Um, I have spoken to schools recently that they're like, well, this is the only person who responded and I understand completely. As long as you let us know what your process was and you know why you decided to go with this choice, we'll work with you to create a corrective action plan to ensure this person receives the proper training and can be approved as a food service director. You are, you are allowed to pay the salary of the applicant out of the food service account once hired while they work on the corrective action plan. So we'll go ahead and jump into our second poll. So our second poll should be hiring requirements only apply to food service directors or the professional standards hire requirements only apply to food service directors, true or false. have some mixed answers here. 
So if you selected true, this is true. The professional standards hiring requirements only apply to food service directors. So everything that we went over was just for food service directors. Now we'll talk a little bit more about training requirements and um, anyone else who's also working in the kitchen. So the annual training requirements are 12 hours of training annually for directors. Managers need 10 hours of training annually. Full-time staff are required to have six hours of training annually. Part-time staff, those who work 20 hours or less a week, are required to have four hours annually. Other staff um, are required to have job-specific training. So directors are also required to have at least eight hours of food safety training every five years. Please remember that Serve Safe is a fantastic way to get the eight hours of food safety training required. However, Serve Safe is not required. School directors can also obtain eight hours of food safety training um, from other sources if they need. For example, the Institute of Child Nutrition has a fantastic eight hour food safety course that food service directors can take if they cannot get into a serve safe class before their training expires. So position descriptions under professional standards do not always match job titles at the school. School nutrition pro program directors are those individuals directly responsible for the management of day-to-day -day operations of school food service for all participating schools under the jurisdiction of the school food authority. For example, a district with five different school buildings may have one food service director overseeing all the schools, which may have food service managers located in each of the buildings. So school nutrition program managers are those individuals directly responsible for the management of day-to-day -day operations of school food service for a participating school within the district. Be sure to consider the tasks that an employee is responsible for rather than the job title of the employee. A job description template can be found on the Institute of Child Nutrition website. So of course, many kitchen staff are wearing many hats. We have some shared roles. If the school nutrition program director is shared between multiple people, for example, the business manager, administrative assistant, principal, whomever, the individual that plans, administers, implements, monitors, and evaluates all aspects of the program is considered the school nutrition program director. So program director duties may include sanitation, food safety, employee safety, nutrition and menu planning, food production, um, procurement and purchasing, financial management and record keeping, program accountability, and so much more probably. <laughs> um, only the person who performs most of the school nutrition program duties must meet the training standards for program directors. So keep in mind, this person must also meet the hiring requirements mentioned earlier in the presentation determined by your enrollment numbers. So annual training requirements apply to food service management companies as well um, at the school, as well as the food service director. So schools with an FSMC typically have two food service directors, one that is employed by the FSMC and one that is employed by the school. Typically the FSMC food service director conducts all planning and other aspects of the school nutrition program. Um, the school food service director typically oversees the contract with the FSMC. We still encourage the, food, the school food service director to have enough knowledge about the program to ensure that the FSMC is doing their job and doing it correctly. So keep in mind that if we visit for a review and there's a fiscal action related to a menu, the funds are taken from the school, not from the FSMC. The school food service director must meet all hiring and training requirements, including eight hours of food safety training every five years. So the school must also maintain documentation for FSMC compliance. For more information about this, 
like I said, there's always a memo. <laughs> SP05-2020, number 5355. And we can also provide you with that resource if you need it. So here are some examples of other staff who may require trainings based on the professional standard requirements. So custodians or food delivery drivers that play a role in the preparation and serving of food or monitoring refrigeration, um, food temps and inventory sheets that would fall into the professional standards requirements. A business manager who completes free and reduced price meal applications throughout the entire school year would also be considered a part-time position with food service. Another example is your point of service person. If you have the same person typically sit at the point of service, they would also be considered part-time and required a minimum of four hours of training annually. So volunteers who have a minimal, who have minimal responsibilities in the program, they are exempt from professional standard requirements. Additionally, support staff like custodian that are not involved in the operation, preparation, or service of the program would be exempt. We talk about we talked about custodians in the last slide. So it just depends on the duties and how they relate to the program. Um, also other exempt staff, office staff processing meal applications or providing other school nutrition support for a short time would be exempt. However, if this person helps processing applications throughout the entire school year, as previously mentioned, professional standards need to be followed. Temporary or substitute um, employees are exempt from the professional standard requirements. However, if this employee becomes permanent position or runs a long time during the school year, they must comply with the requirements. So training hours to be counted toward the annual training requirements must fit into any of these categories. So we have nutrition at 1,000, operations at 2,000, administration at 3,000, communications and marketing for 4,000. Uh, training should be focused, should focus on day-to-day -day management and operation of the school nutrition programs. Training must also be job specific and intend to help employees perform their duties. For example, the eight hours of food safety training a food service director needs every five years would count as eight hours of training during the year they acquire that training. So you may have a beginning of the year training that day or training day that includes many topics. Be sure to only include the ones that relate to food service and fit into the categories mentioned above. Some of the trainings that don't count towards your annual training requirements would include, um, and they're definitely not limited to these, but they would, they would not count towards it, would be the security procedures, building operations, um, some motivational speaker lectures, board meetings or other type of meetings and advocacy discussions or SNA or ACDA leadership these would not count towards the annual training requirements. So there are a few different ways on how you can obtain training hours. Um, a great resource is a database of training operations that the USDA Professional Standards webpage provides. On this website, training is available in a variety of formats from different sources. Additionally, the Institute of Child Nutrition has many courses available. Also, the CANS website features various web, webinars and training opportunities. You can also count time spent in on-site training, such as conferences, um, providing and receiving local training on various topics, such as food safety, point of service, or meal patterns from a local supervisor is countable. So now after you've completed these trainings, School food service authorities must track completed training hours. Things to track would include the employee name, date of training, the length of the training, and training topic area. A simple spreadsheet or 
organization of paperwork would meet requirements. Remember that CANS does have a professional standards template on our webpage that you can use to log all training for the kitchen employees. It contains all of the required elements that must be tracked. So, and also keep certificates um, providing from, provided from online trainings and in-person trainings as documentation for the trainings. So we'll jump into our final poll here. So how many training hours are food service directors required to reach each year? So 12 hours, if you entered in 12 hours, you are correct, which was everybody. Yes, 12 hours is the requirement for food service directors to reach each year. So we'll go ahead and open it up for you to ask any questions. If you do have any questions, you can either unmute or you can just pop it into the chat. I can't see. So were there any in the chat? I am not seeing any questions in the chat right now. If you have any questions, feel free to type it in there. Uh, we have a question. Are we required to have a director? That is a great question. Rob, can you go a little bit more in depth with that? Yeah, um, schools uh, that are on the school lunch program are required to have a director. Um, so the person that is in charge of the day-to-day -day operation, in charge of the, the menu planning, um, the tasks, I think, Cinda, maybe touched on earlier. Um, it might not be your title, but you would be the person we would be considered as the director. So if you're um, overseeing the operation of what's going on in the kitchen, um, that's mo most likely you'd be the director in that. If you have further discussion or questions on it, we can chat with, with you uh, later on. But yeah, uh, director is required. Uh, at least one director is required at every uh, school district. Thank you, Rob. Like I said, we have a number of different schools that either have the principal who is doing some of the duties and the business manager doing other duties. Um, like Rob said, it's, that's what we would consider your director making sure that you meet those. If you need this page for your training, just let us know. We'll hang on for a little bit longer, see if there's any more questions. And of course, thank you so much for attending. Of course, you can always call us or just send us an email. If you have any other questions, we do have one. Oh, sorry, that's you, Rob. Um, if you have oh, I was gonna say. We Sorry. have the link and we have the link in the chat. So before you before you run, uh, let's go ahead and follow that for your survey. Yes, and thank you all for joining.